usually during every NFL offseason, you'll have a couple of rumors that kind of make its run of the mill, so to speak, and they kind of catch everybody's attention. And sometimes those rumors bear themselves out to end up being based in fact, and other times they end up being based in myth. And the purpose of this video to me is twofold. Is number one to address whether or not the Jets should indeed trade cornerback Darrell Revis, and if they do, who would be some of the potential best suitors for Darrell Revis on the trade market? All right, let's cut the crap. I try to keep it as realistic as possible. The Jets suck, and they're going to continue to suck. And they proved their level of suck last year. And what I mean by level of suck was they weren't terrible enough to win two or three games and get, you know, maybe the first or second or third pick in the draft. No, they were the worst type of suck you could be, which is just mediocre, where you fool people into thinking you're better than you really are, but you play like crap, and you might find a way to win five or six games. And that's what the Jets did last year. They won six games. Their offense is boo-boo. So, of course, this dumbass organization, the Jets, is probably going to spend a lot of draft picks investing in their defense because that's what moronic organizations do. This is a team that is going nowhere fast, a team that desperately needs to rebuild. They've hired a new GM. They need to fire their damn coach. They need to get rid of their damn quarterback and find a new one, among other issues on that team. And they also, at the same time, lack a lot of cap space. So you come to Darrell Rivas, beyond question, one of the very best corners in the National Football League, a multi-time Pro Bowler, multi-time first-team All-Pro. You know, this is a guy that is... Um, if he continues on this path, will be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio someday. No question about it. But this is also Darrell Revis that is coming off of an ACL injury where he missed the majority of the 2012 season. And, you know, ACL injuries are not as significant and not as severe and not as hard to come back from as they used to be. That is for sure. But it's still a major knee injury at a skill position like corner. It still can be a challenge. There's no guarantee that Revis comes back and be, is the same player that he has been for years. Also keep in mind when we're talking about Revis, this is a Darrell Revis that is entering the last year of his deal. Yet another idiotic thing that the Jets did, when they gave Revis more money, they just gave him more money and they didn't even lock him up a bunch of more years. So that way they would avoid this problem. So you've got a corner, your best player on your team, offense or defense, period, he is coming back from a major knee surgery, and on top of that, oh yeah, he's entering the last year of his deal. And you're a team that's mediocre, going nowhere fast. You're the worst type of team you could be in the NFL. Now, I can sit here and come up with all these things and shit on the Jets, because frankly, they deserve it. But on the flip side, you have to look at it. You know, sometimes you want to get younger with your team, and you want to make moves just for the sake of making moves, and it doesn't necessarily always make the best sense to do it. Like, what is Darrell Revis's trade value? What would he potentially be able to command on the open market? That is as significant a factor as anything else. I mean, we are talking about still, you even if you play the assumption that he comes back to full health and he regains his status as a shutdown corner in the NFL, you know, what type of value does he have to you as a shutdown cover corner on a bad team? Okay, you go for winning six games to win eight, maybe nine. whoop de doo What does it all mean? Absolutely nothing. But what is another team going to be able to, you know, bring you in return if you trade Revis to them? Because you're going to have to look for a team that's going to have cap value because you would assume in order for this deal to be facilitated, not only are they going to have to have the cap space to cover Revis's cap number this year, but Revis is also going to want a long-term deal. And if a team is going to have to give up a lot in return for Darrell Revis, they're probably going to want to lock him up as a long-term investment. So you're going to have to find a team with cap room and probably plenty of it. You're going to have to find a team with the picks that would they would have the ammo to be able to make the deal. You would have to have the team that would be willing to, to actually make the deal, to have the balls to be able to make this deal. So there are a lot of other factors. Now, obviously, there's precedent for this. You look back at Jared Allen in the 2007-2008 offseason when the Kansas City Chiefs gave him up to the Minnesota Vikings. They got the 17th overall pick, the 73rd and 82nd overall selection. They switched six-round picks with the Vikings. You know, they got a lot back in return for Jared Allen. Now, you could sit there and say, you know, the Vikings got the better end of that deal, but in theory, the Chiefs did get a lot back for one player. So that kind of makes you wonder, 
you know, what exactly would Darrell Revis' market be? Now, you've heard some people talk about the market for him would be a first-round pick this year and maybe a conditional mid-round pick the following year. That might be a good baseline, but I can tell you right now, if you get enough teams, if you can get three or four teams bidding for the services of Darrell Revis and trying to outdo each other, the Jets could potentially find themselves in a very advantageous position. I found it curious that, of all people, Keyshawn Johnson said, a player, by the way, who was once traded by the Jets to the Bucks for two first-round picks, that, you know, Revis is a nice player, but the Jets have a lot of other issues. I'm paraphrasing here. But if they could, the Jets could find a team stupid enough to give up two first-round picks for a non-quarterback, they have to do that deal. And that's funny from Keyshawn, a guy who was once given up for two first-round picks. My deal, I'm looking at in the situation for the Jets, you're talking about a team that could potentially for Darrell Revis, a shut-down cover corner, a legit shut-down cover corner. They might be able to get a first and third from somebody this year, maybe a second and fourth as well next year. Or maybe they would just get the first and third this year and either the second or the fourth in 2014. There's the potential to get quite a number of picks here and some substantial important ones that if you do the right things with your drafts, which is asking a lot, obviously, over the years from the New York Jets organization, they could potentially get some big payoff and maybe find two or three Pro Bowl players that can more than make up for what you lose from trading a Darrell Revis. So in my opinion, the Jets have no choice. If they can get the right price, they have to trade Darrell Reeves. It makes no sense for them to keep him long-term because they are a bad team. Their defense is not that great. They're just, they put up decent stats, but they ultimately aren't that great. And their offense is terrible and is going to take a long time to rebuild. So why sit there and have Darrell Reeves waste his peak years for you when you could get so much more back in return for him and you can really help accelerate that rebuilding process. Which brings me to some of the teams that could potentially be in the market for Revis's services. There are about five or six teams that I think could potentially be in the bidding for Darrell Revis's services. If a Revis trade was to go down, I think it would go down maybe with one or two weeks left until the uh, April NFL draft. I really do. Now, a lot of people have obviously brought up the 49ers, and understandably so. This is a team that is built to win right now with the um, fleecing of the Chiefs in the Alex Smith deal. They've got even more draft pick ammo. They've got a lot of picks in order to make the deal happen. I'm not sure that trading for Revis would be a bad thing for the 49ers, but I'm not sure if it's the best thing. I don't know that they have a lot of cap space to be able to facilitate this deal without potentially having to let some other key players go in the next couple of seasons. Uh, you know, they do have the draft pick ammo, but salary cap space? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best way for the San Francisco 49ers to go. A team that I think could potentially benefit a lot from acquiring him would be somebody like the Cincinnati Bengals. They have a first-round pick and two second-round picks. Now, if you're looking at it from the Jets' standpoint, you probably wouldn't want to trade Darrell Revis to an ABFC team unless you had to. But this is a Bengals team that I think, if they got that one last piece on defense, a an elite shutdown cover corner, you know, along with maybe adding one linebacker in the draft, you're talking about an elite Bengals defense that could help that team contend for a Super Bowl in 2013. They have a ton of salary cap space, and they have the draft pick ammo to do it. The St. Louis Rams have some cap space. They have draft pick ammo to do it. You know, you might say, other than safety, that secondary isn't necessarily a huge need for the St. Louis Rams, and it very well may not be. But maybe Jeff Fisher is looking for a guy in that secondary to come in and be, again, an elite shutdown cover corner and pre present some leadership um, to that defense, bring some leadership to that defense, and help that St. Louis Rams team take that next step and become a playoff contender in 2013. You're looking at teams, you know, maybe let's say the Denver Broncos. You know, there's another team that you look at them. They are built to win now, like right now. The Broncos' window of opportunity to win a Super Bowl is probably 2013, 2014, and that is absolutely it. They have some cap space, not a ton, but they have some. And, you know, they have the willingness and desire to want to win right now. With Peyton Manning as their quarterback, they have to win now. So if they gave up a first and a second round pick this year, let's say, to bring in a Darrell Revis, the Broncos really wouldn't bat an eye about it. And it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for them to do. 
Another team I think you're going to see hear a lot about in terms of trying to pursue Darrell Rivas is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've got the 13th overall pick in this upcoming April's NFL draft. They've got a second rounder. I believe they have two third rounders as well. Uh, they have some draft pick ammo. They have some draft pick ammo. They also have a ton of salary cap space. They have a defensive-minded head coach in Greg Schiano, and he could definitely use some help in that secondary, in particular the cornerback position. Revis could come in and, you know, with some good pass rushers in that front four, you know, he could really provide a big-time difference to the Buccaneers in that NFC South, especially for a team that has to go up against people such as Steve Smith and Roddy White and Julio Jones and Marcus Colston, etc. There are some nice skill position players on the outside in the NFC South, and having a Darrell Revis there if you're Tampa Bay could potentially take you from being a 6-10, and 7-9 and nine team and help you become a 10-11-12 win team right away in 2013. As far as the teams that I think that should or would be the most likely to pursue them, I don't expect the 49ers to be that actively involved unless something changes. I'm not saying that they wouldn't go after them, because some of it does make sense. But I'm not sure at this point that they're the most likely ones to pursue Darrell Revis. I think teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, maybe you throw in a wild card like the Tennessee Titans, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Denver Broncos. I think those are going to be some of the teams that you'll have to pay attention to that will be most likely to have a combination of salary cap space, uh, draft pick ammo, want and desire to make a big move like this that would help facilitate a trade of Darrell Revis to them. The bottom line is, is the Jets shouldn't trade Darrell Revis just for the hell of it. If they're only going to get, let's say, a first round pick and that is clearly it, then you keep Darrell Revis. And I want to make that perfectly known now. If you can get a first and a third in this year's draft and maybe a second or a fourth in next year's draft, you have to strongly consider it. If you could somehow get a first in 2013 and a first in 2014, you have no choice. You must. You must do that. If somebody's doing first-round picks for a non-quarterback, you must do it. And that's a fact. Bottom line. I think it's going to get very interesting. Uh, this situation could get very ugly. We may still end up seeing Darrell Revis play out the 2013 season with the Jets. It's very possible. Um, I'm very curious to see. Because if this deal does go down, it could potentially have a lot of impact on this upcoming April's NFL draft. But make sure you let me know down below whether or not you think the Jets should trade Darrell Revis. And if you do, like I do, if the price is right, obviously, which team do you think is most likely going to take that step to make the move to bring him in?